Howdy folks, I'm Grotto Goblin of the Goblin's Grotto, and I'm in a bit of a painting mood today. Well, actually, I started filming this many weeks ago at this point, but you know how it goes. After watching the recent Marvel Moon Knight series on Disney+, and seeing the Lost Tombs of Akir expansion being unlocked for the Bones 6 Kickstarter, I found myself really wanting to paint some Egyptian-inspired miniatures. Lucky for me, I already had a small collection that fit the bill. Actually, I even had a mini that would fit in for a good bootleg Moon Knight. Well, if this moonlight is up for a little bit of necromancy anyway. Man, actually, speaking of tombs, maybe this Bones 6 adventure might make for a good Laura Croft. Much to think about. But never mind those. Today I want to start on all of my Egyptian-inspired minis, all of which come from Reaper Miniatures. And in today's video, I'll be tackling the four undead minis from this collection. Now you might, at some moments, be watching me painting and saying, What are you doing? and that's fair. Some of the ways I get from point A to B are not entirely planned, but they are still based in some reason and experience. For instance, you may notice for some of these models, I do not put on any sort of primer. Well, this is both a functional and demonstrative choice. Most Reaper miniatures do not actually require primer. They are made of a particular type of material that takes paint well. Still, priming or at least base coating will usually yield the best results. But, as you can witness here, it is not 100% necessary. The first mini you've been watching me paint here today is The Mummy Captain. To make painting this mini a little bit easier on me, I took some double-sided tape and adhered this mini to one of the Reaper base boss bases that I got back in Bones 5. With this, I was able to fit this snugly within my Citadel miniature holder. Obviously, you don't need any of this fancy stuff to paint. It just makes it easier for me. You can get roughly the same effect with some double-sided tape or some sticky tack on top of a cork for a bottle, an old deodorant stick, or really anything else round that's easily gripped. Anyways, about the mini in question, it was the most skeletal out of this group, and I wanted those bones to really pop. The problem is the linen wrappings are just about the same color as aged bone. So, when I get to the highlighting and shading stage, I'll make sure to focus any brightening up on the bone areas, as these are, naturally, more likely to be brighter, having been bleached in the sun. Assuming this thing actually goes outside. Meanwhile, though, the wraps can remain dingy, as rotting cloth is likely to retain layers of stains and other particulates. Especially if you consider that this cloth was on a mummified but still decaying body at some point. Now, even though the wraps seem gross, I didn't want the outfit and the adornments to be so. I see this sort of creature coming from a bright environment, and I want to preserve some of that. Also, the bright, regal nature may appropriately mask the true nature of these creatures. As far as all these embellishments go, I used a mix of metallic metal paints, coming to us from both Army Painter and Reaper. Of course, if you want to spend more time on a mini, non-metallic metal is a great way to go. This is the process of recreating a metal touch through shading and highlighting of more standard paints. Perhaps I'll do a video on that someday, but I've always preferred the look and time saving offered from a good quality metallic paint. So, eh, I won't be doing that anytime soon, I think. Now with a few final highlights and other small details, this mini is ready. Really happy with how he turned out. He's a bit lighter than perhaps I'm used to with my undeads, and I think that works out pretty good for the theme. And with this mini, speaking of, with this mini, I can use it to set the tone for the rest of the set, at least in some part hearkening back to the visual style of the mini here. Moving on, our next minis are a pair. They come from a line of models very much inspired by those classic movie monsters. In this case, mummies. We have a classic mummy with rotting flesh still on the bone, and another much more preserved priestess type figure. 
who really doesn't have to be an undead figure, but I will choose that path later on. The standard mummy was a little bit easier to get a scheme going for, as mostly we're just dealing with wraps. Since there was still some flesh exposed here though, I decided to use that zombie flesh paint I got from the Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments line a long time ago. It adds a sickly green and helps differentiate it from the wrappings. I was still figuring out how exactly I wanted to paint his paramour at this time, but after seeing how the zombie flesh paint performed, I decided to use it on her as well as the base for her skin. Originally, I wasn't sure that I wanted her to be a member of the undead, but I realized a greener color scheme might be benefited by such a decision. Back to the mummy, things were pretty standard, but I did encounter an issue with his clothes. They were really sticking out and looking too much like swim trunks or something for me. They were just too dark, and even though this was only the base coat, if I tried to get it looking like the blue of the Captain Mummy, it would have been really distracting for the piece. So, after layering and washing, I made sure to heavily dry brush the mini, particularly in this area, with increasingly brighter shades of khaki, which is the same paint I used on all the wrapping. Doing this lightened everything up, brought it all into one cohesive look, and I think saved the piece. You'll get some touch-ups later, but at this point I was happy and decided to move on to the lady. Mixing it up from the blue of most of the other minis, I decided this one would be a different but still fitting shade of green. Since much of her skin is exposed, I have to get that right. As for the dress, I originally had only planned the main garments to be actual clothes, the bits around the legs, falling from the wrist, to be the same kind of wraps we've seen before on the other mummies. However, with the skin already being so bright, I ran into the same issue as the last mini detracting dark zones. The green dress just created this weird triangle and the dark green clothes were a little too distracting and from a distance the rest of the figure could disappear in lighter environments. But I actually wanted to keep this darker shade of green so instead of heavily dry brushing like I did with the last mini I tied all of the cloth into the same material. I think this makes the figure look a lot more visually well-rounded, and since this one isn't exactly a mummy anyway, perhaps the wraps make a little bit less sense than with the other minis. After applying a few more layers of paint, I eventually found myself confronted with my greatest challenge, the face. I always struggle with these, but I knew I wanted to maintain that green aesthetic and carry over some of that to the face. So, I opted to use the same green paint as the dress for the lipstick and the dots of the eyes. I didn't think getting down to the level of eyebrows would help much, and besides, a wash is going to cover up most of this anyway. Eventually, after lots of trial and error, using progressively smaller and smaller brushes, I was happy with the face and began moving on to the washing stage. I use the classic brown wash Agrax Earth shade. It looks really good with gold and makes things less cold than a black wash like say Nuln Oil would. This is a warm climate, a desert based figure, so a cold tone just wouldn't fit it quite as well I think. And after some final passes this mini is finally done. I quite like this sculpt and this paint job. It's in theme but perfectly usable outside of that. She'd make for a great player character mini for sure. Alright, last for today's video, we have the Mummy Lich. I actually did end up priming this one, but I did so in a very particular way. Base coating everything with a black brush on primer, and then highlighting in a downward motion from above with a white primer, both of which are from Reaper Minis. This essentially highlights the mini in a manner akin to a zenithal highlight. If you don't have white primer, you can always do this step with a white or even gray paint. But be warned, some white paints have a tendency to be chalky and may gunk up your mini, and we don't want that, especially at the stage where you're essentially creating your canvas. Once everything was primed, I could get a good look at the mini and see all of what needed attention. Highlighting in the first step save you some trouble down the road. The amount of times I've started in on a mini and not realized that there was some little detail until much later on that now has been muddled by other paints, eh, I, it doesn't bear thinking about. But it can happen. 
The first thing I wanted to get right with this mini is the skin. This mini is a lich, and unlike the captain, they actually have a lot of skin and muscle preserved. And well, with all that being said, I figured there's no better paint for this skin than lich skin, which is actually a stone texture from Army Painter. The next thing I decided to do was start a first layer of gold, which this mini would have a lot of. I was pretty quickly unhappy with my gold paints here. They just didn't quite look right. I ended up using three different gold paints by the end of this, all together in a series of layers. I think the main reason I struggled with this part is that I typically base coat gold areas with a brown paint. I didn't do that this time. The brown undercoat just gives the typically pretty opaque gold paint a little more to chew on and helps you in the layering. But since I wanted to use the highlighting I did in the primer stage, I skipped the brown paint. When I was done there, I experimented with some colors for the cloth. Initially, I thought some of the cloth here could be highlighted as mummy wraps, but I quickly realized it was all more or less part of the same cape. And this is a proper cape, and someone with this much bling should have a nice, colorful cape. I actually really like the dichotomy between the gray, decrepit lich and its bright, colorful, gleaming attire. Outwardly, I think this presents the lich how they want to be seen. Regal, rich, refined. All the things a figure in power wants to project. But, within, there is still this dark, dead husk of a person, with no warmth, or recognizable face to speak of. No matter how much power they wield, or how much finery they wear, it will never mask the stench of undeath, or allow anyone to look upon their face as it truly was in life. Almost makes you feel bad for that guy. But then you look up how you make phylacteries, and become a lich, and things like D&D, &D and uh, yeah, maybe not. Anyway, I'll tell you what, I definitely don't feel bad about how this paint job is going. A nice balance of dark and light, I personally really like how the metallic gold catches the light. Yeah, I think what we have here is a great final boss mini for a campaign set in an Egyptian inspired area. I probably will use this someday, and I look forward to using all the little details on this mini to highlight the encounter. But with that, we're all wrapped up for today. In the next part, I'll be working on the three Avatar minis. In the meantime, I've been Grotto Goblin of the Goblin's Grotto. You've been you, and thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment goes a long way. If you want to support me further, you can check me out on Ko-fi, Twitter, and anywhere else on the screen, or in the description. Alrighty, have a good one, take care, stay safe, and if you've got them, let's go paint some minis.